Hello and welcome to another pen video from me, Penultimate Dave. So I have here another new pen and this is a pen that I picked up at the London International Pen Show in October 2019. So let's do an unboxing of this and a review of it. So let me lift the lid on this pen and you'll see here it's a very special pen and it has this... Uh, sort of Japanese lettering on the box it's a balsa wood box so it's quite light so let me remove that and you'll see it here now this was a pen that I wanted from January I'd actually ordered it in January 2019 uh, this typically is a pen that you do have to order it does take around eight months to be created because um, they make them individually in Japan uh, by the end of May, it still hadn't arrived and I cancelled it. And then by the London International Pen Show in October 2019, I was going around and lo and behold, at John Hall's uh, right here table at the pen show, where I had originally ordered it from, it was sitting there. So let me lift the lid on this box and you can see the pen in its glory. So if I just turn this around a little bit you'll see here the first off you get a lovely kimono which uh, will be very nice uh, so I will be using that a lot you get a sailor polishing cloth you get a couple of sailor cartridges as well um, I probably won't use those but because uh, I'm not really a cartridge person uh, you get the sailor writing instrument uh, booklet or instruction manual and then you have this lovely pen so let me zoom in a little bit more and you'll see it here so this is a sailor king of pen it's the sakura nagar and i've probably butchered that name i don't speak japanese unfortunately uh, and i'm sure it's a completely wrong pronunciation of the name but sakura nagar is how i would probably say it um reading the name uh it's basically sakura translates to uh, cherry blossom and the idea is all of this makie the the warden that is on this pen is actually the cherry blossom petals and it's basically flowing down a river and this is a beautiful pen so the story behind this pen was that i have a classic pens lb5 and i do love it a lot it's about half a centimeter to a centimeter longer than a um sailor king of pen uh, but it was made by sailor for classic pens and i actually have that pen here and you can see that pen so it is slightly longer and slightly more girthy but this was uh, the classic pens lb5 was another pen that i wanted i wanted it in a different color but these have come to become very expensive on the second hand market so i had decided that i'm not going to buy another one of those but i wanted a sailor king a pen and this one really did speak to me uh, i love the gold in it and i so you can see the gold flecks or leaves or whatever you want to call that that gold it's it's really like a gold dust uh, to me but it's quite uh, enriched there and then you have the stunning Varden uh, and this is the abalone shell in different colors there and then you can see the cherry blossom petals just mingled in amongst that abalone shell Varden and a lot of those pieces are actually almost like a heart shape as well so to me it's actually quite a nice looking pen and it's a pen that I really do like a lot I love the way that this pen has been designed so for me this was a definite buy call it kismet call it fate at the end of the day i had ordered this pen from john hall right here in january uh, i'd cancelled the order at the end of may and i then subsequently changed jobs in july and then coming back to the October pen show, or just prior to that in August, I saw John post a photo on Facebook of this pen. But when I went to check on the website, it said it was a special order. So I thought, well, he hasn't got it. And then when I was walking around the London International Pen Show, there it was. And you can actually see the video where I first spotted it on camera. And 
at that point, I made the very snap, very impulsive decision that this was the pen that I'd ordered and this was the pen that was destined to come to me. I had cancelled the order. Nobody had purchased this pen yet. Uh, it's not a cheap pen and uh, that's probably why. But it's a beautiful pen and I decided that I just couldn't let this pen go. I couldn't let this pen go into somebody else's hands and because I would then be regretting this and I would probably be ordering this and waiting another eight months if I was lucky um, even to get it at all. So for me this pen is a really stunning pen. So in terms of the size of pen in my hand, if I zoom out a little bit you'll see here it's actually a decent size. Now the nib, it's a 21 carat sailor nib and it's a king of pen nib and you can see that nib in its glory. It's a broad nib but that is a gorgeous nib. Now in terms of the size in my hand, it's a very good size. Would I want to post this? You can post it and I'm posting it lightly here. I really don't want to because I don't want to ruin this uh, maquillé finish. Uh, in terms of the filling mechanism, it's a cartridge converter and it's the standard Sailor cartridge converter. Now I know some people have had issues with these Sailor converters uh, malfunctioning a lot. I haven't. I, I only have two Sailors. I have my Classic Pins LB5 and I have a Sailor 1911 Executive with a Naganata Togi nib and I've not had either of those converters fail on me it's not saying that they won't fail but I just have so far been lucky uh, maybe I'm not using the pens as much as I should do uh, but for me uh, I have not had any issues maybe I will with this one, I don't know but you can buy the Sailor converters, so to me it's, and I think they're only £5, so it's not a major issue for me, to be honest. But for me, I really love this pen. It's it's a beautiful pen. You can just see there as you turn, and how that light affects all of those Raden petals. If I zoom in a little bit more, you'll see there, this really is a stunning, stunning Macchiato pen. So... I just had to buy it. It was just not an option to not buy it. So this was a pen that I decided there and then within a split second, probably a thousandth of a second, that I would just go and buy it. And to be honest, I'd already bought a number of uh, slightly more expensive pens. So uh, I was starting to think, well, should I not buy this pen? But... I just couldn't leave without it and I could have probably asked John to reserve it for me uh, and I'm sure John would have done but to be honest I just didn't want to miss out on this pen so I'm really really glad that I was able to get this pen and add it to my collection so I think let's do a size and weight check and then we'll do a pen comparison and then we'll do a writing sample so the length of the pen is about 150 millimeters in length the cap is about 73 millimeters in length so it's quite a large pen and then if I check from the tip of the nib we're looking at about 130 millimeters in length so that to me is an oversized pen and I think let's go and do a weight check. Now this pen is uninked and it's just under 36 grams. The cap itself is just just over 13 and a half grams or just under 14 grams. And then the pen itself uninked we're looking at around about 22 grams so that is a fairly good weight and it's a weight that I'm happy with in a pen to be honest and I do have a lot weightier pens than this so for me 
I don't think this is going to be a problem uh, in, in my hands whatsoever. So here's a comparison with pens. So this is the Visconti Homo Sapiens London Fog, the Leonardo Officina Italiana Memento Zero, and this is the Hawaii version. This is the Leonardo Officina Italiana Memento Zero. This is the Mediterranean, which is the celluloid with a gold nib and a piston version. We have a Pelican M800, and this is the Royal Gold Raden. We have a Sailor King of Pen, Sakura Nagara, or Nagar. We have a Conway Stewart, Churchill in the Red Stardust. We have a Classic Pens, LB5 in the Kawasaki. We have a Visconti Opera Master Crimson Tide. We have a Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Age Lava. And we have a Visconti Templar Jacques de Molay. Now, I'm just trying to think what ink I'm going to actually ink this up with because it's a gold ink. I've already inked up a pen recently with another uh, KWZ Honey ink. I've got, I could put a gold ink in, or I could just go for any ink. So I think what I will do, I want to look at KWZ Grapefruit because I've not tried that ink yet. So I think I might actually ink that up instead. And I guess that that ink doesn't match the color of this pen. And that's normally what I do. But I think from, from that perspective, I think it will be okay. Because there's a lot of colors going on there in, in this pen. So I think let's go and grab the KWZ Grapefruit. As this is one of my newer inks. And I will unwrap the cling film uh, KWZ do this to, to all of their bottles and I kind of like it because bottles can spring leaks and having this done up very very tightly I'm sure this takes a lot of time to individually shrink wrap every single bottle but to me I think it's worth it especially when bottles can leak so I think this grapefruit is actually going to be a really nice color I've never tried this before uh, so let's give this a try. Actually, I wonder if it smells of grapefruit. No, it des definitely does not smell of grapefruit. It doesn't smell as as strong or potent as some of the KWZ inks. Uh, so that, to me, is quite good. And right, we'll get some kitchen towel ready. And we will try and ink this pen up. It didn't actually take much ink, so we'll try again. Let me just submerge it a little bit more, perhaps. Yeah, that's a lot better. Probably just had a lot of air stuck in the converter there, so that in itself... Oh, this is actually going to be a lovely colour ink. I think I'm going to fall in love with this ink. So it's an orangey, grapefruity ink, uh, as you can see here from the cap of the ink it's actually really quite nice so i think this actually might become one of my favorite oranges or sort of orangey reds or orangey grapefruits depending on, on what you want to call it really but let's put this bottle away and i think let's do a writing sample so this is the first time that i have inked up this pen so this is going to be interesting so this is the Sailor King of Pen and it's the Sakura Nagar and it's a 21 carat gold nib and it's a broad nib but this is a beautiful nib so this is more of a medium western nib, but this to me writes really well. So the, the ink in here is KWZ and it is grapefruit. And this is a beautiful ink. So I think this is actually going to be a really nice writing pen for me, an all day writer. Uh, so this is... Although a broad nib from Sailor, 
it's more like a Western medium. You can apply a little bit more pressure, get a little bit more pressure out of that. Now I don't try to push my nibs too hard, but you can see there that you do get some line variation out of it. But that is a very nice nib. Now if I do the wetness test, this is an orange ink or an orangey ink. So it's quite a wet ink, but it's not a super wet ink, or, and it's not a super wet nib, but it's a nib that writes exquisitely well. So I do like this a lot from Sailor. Uh, I think that this is a really good writing pen. Um, I'd have to say that this actually writes better than my classic pens LB5, to be honest. Uh, my LB5 I purchased uh, on the second hand market, but that is a sailor medium nib so uh that in its sense is actually a western fine nib and that's probably why i don't like writing with it as much but this is a really really beautiful nib so there you have it that's my uh unboxing and review of the sailor king of pen sakura nagar thanks for watching please like comment subscribe and i'll see you on the next pen video bye bye